the Penny Arcade. Yeah. So. And then there was some show I remember, like about a surfing band. Right. I, I don't remember the name, or it, it didn't go to pilot, but I was up for that. And then another one about a kind of um, uh, Christy Minst new Christy Minstrel, big, uh, you know, a mighty wind. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, act, you know, I guess it was a show about a whole family, or I think that kind of became the Parchers fun family, actually. I was up for that. So it was in the air. There was, there, it was in the air to have some show about that time, that music, and, and that generation. Right. And of course, the Monkees uh, did go to pilot, you know, but it, it almost didn't. It was a real close call, you know, whether or not that was going to sell. And that's been almost 50 years ago, 1960, November 65, when you shot that pilot in September when you guys were all, you know, the ad was placed, and it's pretty incredible. Really? <laughs> yes. So let's take another question. You got it. Hi, Mickey. Scott Campbell Duncan. I'd like to know if you could share with us what you do to maintain such a strong vocals. Yes. Contemporaries of yours. Beatles, Stone, or who, don't hit those high notes anymore. What's your secret? Uh, there's, uh, my, my other voice is in an attic getting older. <laughs> so, um, no, it's a good question. I have been asked that uh, um, a few times. It's, I think it's a combination of a few things. One is just genetics. My parents were both singers, and so I think I just inherited, you know, probably the physicality, the muscle, the musculature, because your vocal cords are essentially little muscles that you have to train and take care of, and, you know, you're either born with them or not, to some degree. Uh, so I think a little bit of genetics. Uh, the other thing is, um, I uh, well, actually a lot maybe of genetics, and then um, uh, I think um, after the monkeys, uh, post monkeys, I um, uh, went to England. I moved to England and started directing and producing uh, television shows and films and stuff. And I didn't sing for a good ten years at least uh, at all, and. So I missed that whole mid-70s, 80s, you know, kind of post, you know, uh, thing where you'd go out and you'd sing in clubs and, you know, smoke-filled clubs with cigarettes and no monitors or nothing. I remember my mom once during the Monkees, and she was a proper singer, she had been trained. And I remember once she came down to L.A. and, and, and uh, kind of kind of hang out and see me. And um, we'd already had a bunch of hits. It was like, already the, the, the whole monkey thing was huge. So it was probably 67, 68. And she came down to LA and she said to me, uh, she went to a recording session. We were recording something. And she said, Mickey, you, you know, you might want <clears throat> to get, you know, some lessons about how to breathe and how to sing and, you know, breathe and stuff. And I was so stupid. I just said, Mom, I just sold 65 million records. <laughs> <laughs> and there, you know, there was, there's probably something, something to be said there for the fact that the Monkees was, was essentially, you know, this kind of trashy garage band, basically. And um, that sound, that raw, uh, un untrained uh, sound, you know, probably had a little bit to do with it. Anyway, so I, I missed all the 70s and 80s doing um, clubs and smoke and, you know, all, everything else. And um, well, I, I came back and started singing, of course, in the, in the reunion tours. But then the big change, and I think the thing that's most fundamental uh, was when I started doing musical theater, in uh, 2001 or two, whatever it was, I got a uh, cast in Aida, the Elton John, Tim Rice musical on Broadway, and the national tour. And, uh, and my, my uh, uh, manager uh, 
said, you know, you really should get some training because uh, uh, it's eight shows a week and it's like big time vocals, you know. <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, I said, oh, are you sure? I mean, I, so I actually um, told Paul McCartney this. Did I drop that name? <laughs> You're going to pick it up again? <laughs> I was talking to Paul a couple of years ago at a rehearsal he was having, and we were talking about vocal training, and he was asking me about the Broadway thing and the vocals, and I said, well, you know, and I told him this story about how I, I went to this vocal coach, amazing guy uh, in L.A. called Eric Vitro, and I said, uh, when I went to my first session, I said, you know, I don't want to sound like Mary Alonza. <laughs> Paul says, you should be so lucky. <laughs> Which is true. But that was a fear I had. And, and everybody I know that I've talked to about this says, they go into their first vocal training session, and they're like, I don't want to sound like an op opera singer or something like that. But that's not what it's about. It's about training this muscle these two little muscles that are in your throat, uh, and they are, they're just these two little vibrating, uh, very thin little muscles. And you have to treat them as you would a sport. If you were playing tennis or any sport, you, you have to take care of those muscles, you have to warm up, you have to train, you have to do it over and over and build up the strength and protect them and not injure them. And so the combination of all those things is, you know, and being blessed, of course, as I say, uh, is, is, is the reason, I think, that, you know, I can still, you know, sing a little bit. You're blessed with one of the best voices in popular music, I think. And in particular, I want to say thank you to you because in the last few years you've managed to put it on, on tape or on record a lot more than you had in the previous 20 or 30 years by doing some great albums. Remember, which is a fantastic album. Your new album, Live at BB Kings, which you can hear is completely great vocals on that, doing a lot of the classic songs. And then also the Carol King, King for a Day album. And I hope you do another new album after that soon. Yeah, I'd love to. And make so, me an offer. Well, I've got about a hundred dollars. Um, I want to thank everybody for the Q and A. I think we have to move on, unfortunately. But I'm sorry we didn't have more time for more questions. But uh, Mickey will be here all week. So, or all week. Don't forget to tip your veal and try the waitress. No way. No, try the veal and tip your waitress. Well, I had a good time.